G'day everyone, Argzy here. Welcome along to a first look at a brand new map coming very soon for Farming Simulator 22. This is going to be a PC only map. It is very large and won't be running on any consoles anytime soon. The map is by the Aussie Modding Co-op and it has been coined as the Aussie No Man's. Now, you'll see why in just a little bit, but it really is a big choose your own adventure style map uh, on epic proportions really. We're starting out here, we're down in the middle of the map uh, in the town area, so there is a bit of a pre-established town, um, but other than that, this is very much a start from scratch, build up your own farm, do whatever it is you want to do. So let's dive in, we'll take a look at the PDA at the map, and then we'll go for a little bit of a look around some of the key features. This won't be a long map tour because there's really actually like a lot of Australia, not too much to see, and I don't mean that in the negative way at all, just Australia is such a big place, you can go for miles without seeing anything, and uh, this map captures that very, very well. So, let's dive in, have a look at the PDA, go and suss out some of the key areas, some of the cell points that are here, and uh, have a little bit of a look around. So here we are, this is the PDA, and now whichever way you want to call this map, it is a 16x, that is, it is 16 times the standard 2km by 2km maps. Or another way to look at it is it is 8 kilometers by 8 kilometers across. So each one of these squares is a 500 meter or half kilometer square. So there is 16 across the top and 16 down the side, which gives you, if you do your math, a huge amount of options for farmland. The main features are the river, which runs sort of through the middle and also north south. Uh, the line here, as you may be able to tell from the icons, is a train, train tracks, uh, rail tracks which runs all the way across the sort of middle of the map. There's three points where you can rent a train, one down here at the port area, second one up here in the centre, and then a third one over here on the right. We're down here in the middle of the map, or just offset from the middle. You can see the red dots there. That is uh, ground zero. But uh, we're down here, this is the main sort of town area. And we just can bring up the farmland menu where you can see what is purchasable. Now the way the map is set up at the moment, uh, you do start off, there is a plot over here which is known, there's a plot in the middle which is all the town, another one over here on the left, a skinny one up here, and then the port area. Now I think this all relates to cell points, so we'll have to go and have a look there. Some of the other things that you couldn't really make out on the other map, uh, there's a few roads or tracks that go around and through, you can see those sort of going up and down the middle, uh, there's the river and things like that too, so there's a lot of different areas. Over here on the left hand side there's a little bit of forestry and that sort of thing too, as well as all the trees that are scattered across the map. But if we're just going to take a look, now I'm going to click on this one deliberately, 207 has a value of $250,000, so that is for a 500, 500 metre by 500 metre plot of land, so a decent amount of area. Now I think it's quite clever how this has been done, but if we have a look at say these two plots either side of the river, you can actually find 115 is a little bit cheaper because it's not quite as big, whereas 88 is a little bit larger because it encompasses that little bit of the river. So where a uh, plot of land is dissected by the river or by the roads or the train tracks, the fields are done a little bit different either side, which I think is kind of clever. It actually means if you really wanted to start off a little bit smaller, there's a plot of land there for just $100,000. So having a look around, there is quite a few different options even right down here. You can see how all of those work, so pretty clever, I do like that, um, I think that would make it quite a bit of fun to start off with. So obviously being a start from scratch map, not like No Man's Land, there's obviously no predefined fields or crops or anything like that. Uh, there is some starting equipment showing up here at the moment, but this is not the final save, and this is actually just, if we click on it, this is all the starting equipment you get when you start out on Elm Creek, so there's actually, uh, I don't know whether that will stay in there for the final release, obviously it's going to be pretty undersized and maybe not the most appropriate equipment to be using on here, but that is what's showing up there in case you're wondering. Uh, in terms of a few other things, crop types, we've got all the standard crop types, but there's also a few extra ones here. We've got rye, spelt, triticale, millet, lucerne, carrot, onion, hops, chickpeas, and lentils. Now, of course, I haven't got the uh, expansion on at the moment, so the carrot is actually an extra crop, regardless of whether you have the premium expansion or not. Uh, and obviously there's everything else there as options. Now I haven't looked into any detail of whether there's any equipment available through the map or whether you have to find your own stuff to be able to har harvest things like the carrot and onions. Now just uh, zooming in right here into the town area on the map you can see some of the key features. We're just over the road here from the vehicle shop. We've got a gas station down there as well. Agricultural fair which is one of the sell points. A seed buying, fruit buying and lime buying station. We've also got the animal dealer 
And then there is Hay Australia, which is one of the sell points for hay and silage and things like that, which I think on a map like this, you might start out doing quite a lot of, lot of that. But again, if we just jump into the farmland menu, you can see all this area and something I didn't notice, but a couple of smaller plots over there, possibly to be able to buy your own productions, put your own productions there in the town. Uh, but as you can see, um, this area, you can see the roads which dissect it, not the river, in different areas. So you can see how that is all laid out. So if we're going to go for a little bit of a look around. Uh, we're going to walk around here very quickly. Uh, there's not, like I said, there's not a huge amount to see, but there is a lot of houses uh, and just some buildings and things like that, which is kind of cool. Makes it feel like there is actually a town here in the middle of nowhere. Not much more that way, but we'll just head down here. We're going to take a look at the shop. And in fact, if we just glance across that way, you can see the top of those silos and things like that. That's the Furt and Lime Buying area. Uh, and then you can just see over there in the distance beyond the building is uh, one of the rail stations where you can top up and fill up your train if you're using the train. Or I also think there might be one of the cell points over there. But we're going to take that, take a look at that in just a little bit. Firstly, and remiss of me but we will just bring up the map there just in case uh, there's not too many reference points to call out on this one but let's just have a look here there is your shop so we're just going to go through uh we're in aussie let's go and find ourselves a pretty big track that i have in here grab a nine r we will lease that just going to have a look where that is going to spawn and there you go right in front of us so nice big shop area here uh for things to spawn for you to be able to Get your equipment in and out of lots of space uh, and i do just notice there is also so we pop over here we've got a workshop trigger as well uh aussie modern co-op did mention to me there is a few markers they still want to add that show up on the map so things like this while it doesn't show up here on the map they are going to try and add some icons so that it's a little bit easier to find what's what and what's where same with some of the cell points and those fill stations and things like that for the rail but we'll carry on we'll go for a little bit more of a wander around this way You'll see some of the buildings also look like the productions, uh, but I haven't actually seen if there's any triggers to actually buy them. You see the dairy there. Uh, we'll just come back out this way. In fact, there's two of the dairies. So I don't think they are there as productions. I think they might just be there as placeables, but that could be something that might be added in a little bit later. Of course, you always have the option to be able to put your own placeables down anyhow. So just taking a look at this point here. We've got a cell point there, and I think this might be the agricultural fair. And then we've actually got a wood cell point over there as well. There you go, that is the agricultural fair. Uh, we did have the gas station there, which is where you can purchase your gas, but we've obviously got a point here. We have to bring up our F1 menu. You can sell your wood, so you can cut that down. And you'll notice when we go and have a look around a little bit further, there is a huge number of trees just scattered around. Uh, so there will be options when you're clearing land to be able to get a little bit of wood, make some money off that. We're heading on in here, we are entering into this sort of seed fertilizer buying point. So we'll just come over to the left hand side. We're going to have a bit of a guess. Uh, I think this might be the fertilizer silos. We'll just take a look here back on the map. Now it's showing up as the seed buying station, this one. The one to our right is the fertilizer and at the back is the lime. So seeds in these meridian bins. There you go, there's your lime. That's quite clear and obvious. In fact, it's even labeled up the top would mean drive through here solid fertilizer from inside please drive through and there we go and this is something i've seen on quite a few maps even dating back to fs19 having this kind of drive through fertilizer hill point so there we go that's quite neat quite a good little setup and uh, lots of space so if you're going to be running your big aussie road trains there'd be no shortage of space to be able to get in and around with one of those we just carry on because right next door to here is the animal dealer we see meat and livestock australia mla so this is where you can come down if you're going to be running animals. I think we'll just pop over this way. There is, if I remember correctly. There we go. We don't have any barns or pastures, but this is where the trigger is to be able to load your animal. And I actually believe the trigger is quite big. So you could actually even come down here. Um, it's quite nice how it's been made. You kind of get to whichever loading station you want to in your loading ramp and actually load your animals up from there, which is kind of cool. Lots of space to be able to do that. And then quite appropriately, as we head on out to the back, this is Hay Australia. So big shed and quite clearly defined a bale hay silage straw cell point. So if you start off by mowing some of this grass, and there is a lot of it, this is, might be where you will head to get those things sold. And there we go. Nice big shed, lots of space. 
a pretty clearly defined indicator for what it is you can sell here. Very clear, very nice. Right, like I said, there's not actually a huge amount to look at. So what we might do, we might go up in the air, we'll fly around, take a little bit of a look, give you the lay of the land, show you how the map sort of looks. It is pretty flat, it is pretty open. Uh, there's not a huge amount of undulation. There's a little bit over when we get over to where the forestry sort of area is, where there's a few more trees. But other than that, you are sort of looking and getting a general gist of what this map is going to be like. So we'll start out here, look back across the town. You can see the animal dealer down there, the co-op type dealership just here in front of us, the lime fertilizer and a seed. We've got the hay cell point over beyond, another cell point, the agricultural fair down below us where you can sell your wood as well. And then over there, you can see the tractor sitting in there. That is the store. So a few other spots in and around here, but like I said, not too much to see at all. Now, just going a little bit faster. I'm going to pop over this side, and these three fenced areas uh, are the areas on the map that we could see before, which were small buyable spots. So if you wanted to start out down here, buy a house, set up a production or something like that, you do have that space. Now moving over here just a little bit further, we do actually have a little bit of a sawmill. Um, at the moment, all I can tell is that this is just decorative. There's uh, nothing actually that I can see that can be done with it, but uh, I might be mistaken it could be corrected that you can actually use this but from what i can tell it is a purely decorative point at the moment easy enough to put down some uh, placeable cell points selling i think if you did want to turn it into a sawmill use some of those uh, attributes as well so turning around and just taking a look here at one of the railway loading stations now, i don't know if this doubles up as a cell point or not but uh, this is the silos now there is your trigger there in front or the uh, unload point and that can run up into the silos to be able to load from the train which goes past here on the other side you can see there the uh, loading spouts on that you can't actually drive through this but you've got containers in there so you can't actually use that as an unload and drive through so it is purely the uh, tip point on the outside that you can use for that now the train is rentable we can't rent it from this point i don't think there's a trigger i can't see one on the map uh, there were certainly the ones at the other ends and the one in the middle but not one just here at all so we'll get up and away from there and just have a little bit of a look around uh, you can see over there in the distance the forestry on the side of the hill we're looking back down towards the bottom left corner of the map in the very distance is the port now if we spin around a little bit more we'll see the river heading off here and that one heads off down towards the south carry on around a little bit further um, there's not much to see and we're not going to go expansively through and across the whole map you can see there if we just pause you can see a little bit of a road it does branch down off this one sort of just down there where past the river leaves and uh, heads on down away from us and then looking back up towards the north you can just see the way the train track sort of follows across zigzags up and down and across uh, so that's um that's pretty much all there is to see in terms of what the map looks like but we will carry on i did say that there was a point over here and we're going to go have a look you can just see as our level of distance pops you can just see that starting to appear here on the end so we'll go down and have a look at this one uh, very much the same as what we just looked at and then we'll go and check out the other couple of points including the port at the other end we've timed it very well we're just down here at this silo and you can see the train coming along the tracks just now we've got the point there in front to the exclamation mark where you can rent the train for them uh, tip point there on the right and then if you were using the grain train which is quite a substantial beast uh, you would be loading it up from these augers here on the side but yeah good size train lots of capacity in there and i can imagine if you're going to be harvesting lots of this field you're going to be needing most of that to use it as a sell point uh, but yeah like i said that is the trigger uh, and the unload point over there no drive through or anything like that there is a uh, another drive through down there but doesn't have any purpose so that is the second here of the cell points or the unload points for the grain so as we have a reference point we've come across the top part of the map looking back down there into the middle towards the town now heading along at the top of the rail tracks and you can see we're coming up here to another one of the unload points uh, but if i just sort of spin around a little bit you can see there's really not a huge amount to see it's very much exactly the same in almost every direction I'll just get down into here once again, got the unload pit there, and then if we just go around the other side, space there for the train to come through and go past. And I think if we just come back over here to the marker, bring up our menu, there we go, there's our option there to rent the train. 
So, like I said, there's about three places that you can rent the train from, that being one of them. So we're going to carry on. We'll follow the train tracks down to the end. We'll go have a look actually at the forest, and then we'll head on over to the port. Uh, but again, not a huge amount to see across the river. More expanses of uh, untouched farmland, shall we say, ready for you to tackle and turn in to some pretty big fields. I can imagine after many hours being spent turning this into your own version of Western Australia, 16x version would be fantastic. But like I said, some forestry over here, a decent amount of trees. If you wanted to earn some money that way, you could buy some of these plots and get started rather than just relying on grass and setting up for a... Uh, for sort of typical farming and on and on it goes it's starting to sound a bit like a broken record but let's go on down this way now the edge of the map on this side is sort of bounded by a I don't know whether you want to call it a river uh, whether it's sort of a, the ocean a bit of a harbour or bay or what it might be see the river popping out there into that train tracks carrying down here along with a road and then we get down to the port here where there is a couple of options for how to sell your pro product Looks like we might have a few broken buildings down here, hadn't noticed that before. Um, but like I said, there's a couple of options down here at the port for sell points. We've got the trigger here to dump into the barge, that is your port sell point. And then down at the other end, put our rapid feed on again, you can see another uh, tip point and everything for the train. So it loads there on the right hand side, then up here in between the silos. There's an option to drive through and dump into a Fill point, in fact, this one does use the drive through here. Here we go. Drive through here, that's your uh, unload point for selling and unloading down here at the port. So, really, I don't think I've got much else to say. Like I said, this is going to be a pretty short and sweet one because this is just a ma map of big, vast openness with some pretty well thought out uh, detail with the selling. I like the train through the middle and a decent network of roads to be able to get access around the different parts of the map and uh, having the town in the middle gives you a point to sort of start out from you might want to focus on working there and radiating your way out from the town or you might want to find a bit of land that branches off one of these roads that goes across the map and maybe set up there who knows i'm sure you'll find your own way to play this and this is the beauty of this style of map uh, it's nice to see some bigger open world style maps real little sandbox maps coming through I know there's been a couple of them done now and uh, here we've got a bit of an Aussie themed one, a bit of a variation on them and uh, I'm looking forward to it, I might give this a bit of a play somehow, come up with some ideas and see what we can do but there we go, Aussie Nomads by the Aussie Modding Co-op, uh, fantastic 16x 8km by 8km map coming up very soon for Farming Simulator 22, as I said earlier it will be PC only so keep an eye out for that on their Facebook page, I'll put a link down in the description on where you can find it. So let me know, is this the sort of map that you will play? Are you looking forward to a challenge on a big open world map? Uh, or do you like the fact of starting off with a predefined type of farmland and a map with fields and crops ready to go? Be interested to hear your thoughts. But anyhow, as always, thank you all very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one.